Hello, and welcome to Let's Play Serpent in the Staglands. I'm here host Bring It Done. This game, it's developed by Whale Not Studios. Whale Not Studios. It is a two-person development team. I believe it's a husband and wife that created it. Um, it was a Kickstarter back in 2004, I believe. Um, I've played a few minutes of it, and uh, I didn't really get into any combat when I played. But I do know a couple tips or tricks for the game. And, uh, forgot what I was going to say. But anyway, it's a CRPG. It uh, has the pause and play feature like a lot of CRPGs do. Uh, supposedly it's really, really challenging. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I think the premise is you play as a god. And you can make choices that affect the end of the game. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get it started. Delve right in. Maybe. There we go. That sounds cool. I'll be wrapped in flames. I might, I might read some of this stuff out loud. Alright. And when he peered through the clouds one night and saw a small fleet of boats pass it, tossing on the rocky waters near the coast of the Staglands, lost and, des and despairing, why did you reach down and part the clouds so your moonlight could guide their way to safety? Yeah, I say I admire their ambition and hunger for knowledge of new lands and did not wish to see such spirit quenched by the unending sea. When you first set foot in the staglands and showed yourself to the new settlers, what animal shape did you take on? Sounds kind of cool. Magical four horned antelope. And the Xana, Xana, that you seduced after a winter solstice festival, what gift did you leave behind as you slipped away from her as the moon disappeared into the dawn? Good memories, yeah. My Nord Nikolai. Nikolai. What's happening? Why are you still here? Have you laid here all night in such a state? Erline, finally. I'm glad to see you can stand. Are you continuing your celebrations? I'd invite you to assume a mortal form and share a cup of kafara, but I believe you drank all of mine last night as you masqueraded amongst my villagers. Were you turned down by all of the pretty maidens? Have done, Erline. My visit is a, of a most serious nature. Something has happened. Give me, my lord, pray. Tell me your tale. As I was casting spells to open my portal to return to the moon, I found myself blocked, as if my portal was unlinked. I laid here most of the night, ethereal, trying every spell I knew. That is grave indeed. Do you have any suspicious suspicions regarding who might have closed your portal? In my stupor, I dreamt of a dame in a cloak with green eyes. She was reading my past from a tome, as if she was reading a eulogy. Could this be a prank? In bad taste, yes, but mayhap done at the hands of another god? This cannot be the work of a mortal. Possible, but I know of no one who would do such a thing. My portal was an ancient gift, and not easily tampered with. 
Even more serious, then. My brother's a scribe to the counselors, you know, being skilled with letters, and he has told me some things, small things, that seem odd. A missing counselor, spirits pouring from their chasms, insults traded between races and places of power? And why is the mortal power struggle not filled with bad tidings? Nay, you were right. This must be a matter of gods. Aye, and mayhap I am jumping at my own shadow. But how can I aid you, my lord? I cannot open your portal to get home, and without a better guard than my scroll-bound acolytes, I cannot create any real sanctuary here. As dangerous as it may be for you to travel in mortal form, for you, for you know you can be slain as such, I fear it is your only way of finding any answers. Uh, let's see, you know more of this land than I, as my visits have been more pleasure-bent than observant. I'll trust to your wisdom. What form would my lord take while traveling the Staglands as a mortal? Let me consider the choices. Alright. Character creation. Alright, so it seems to be, let's see, let's start with the Lakovian. Then Territorith, Varakov, Pisarin, Amethavian. Let's see. Lakovians are inhabit an archipelago south of the mainland. Their islands range from exotic lush forests and marshes to rocky mounds teeming with iron and minerals. Their islands support wheat production, farming, and livestock, but it's cramped, making their expanse at the mainland and cause of their and cause of their war efforts for additional land inevitable. Lawless people without centralized government but share a common culture compri com comprising of houses separating island ownership and doing trade with the, uh, one another. While they are fearless sailors and wage massive sprawling wars, Lacovinians are known to have some of the most fearsome sorcerers. This may be due to the cultural worship of the carrying god. What do these guys do? The either Terratians or Terratians, desert lie north of the Spirelands and end at the base of the Sky Peaks. Let's see, what do they do? Uh, the same points so far. Okay, and there's also sub-races. The Barakov. I guess they're more like elves. These are wood elves, essentially. Okay. What do these guys do? Then we go with the Lycovians. But let's look at their uh, sub... Sub race. Or sub... Yeah. Sub race. Oh. So he gets a bonus for fighting humans. Or five extra hit points. I'm gonna go with that, because I'm probably gonna be the tank for my own party. Alright, and we go over what each thing does as well. So intelligence bolsters most all spell potency in combination with your character level. And spell level, increasing one or more the following uh, damage output, hit chance, range, or duration between loops. See spells for specific details. A dexterity increases both initial casting speed for all spells and your natural attack speed. Alright. Strength determines hit damage with melee and ranged weapons, giving a natural bonus to hit damage. Physical damage above base. Strength 2 plus equipped weapon damage. Yeah. Increasing strength or dexterity will unlock additional tiers of four book skills. Occult. Occult blocks magical attacks and increases potency of spells that pertain to buffing yourself or your party, uh, shields, or spell resistances. Increasing your occult or intelligence will unlock new grades of spells. 
Yeah, perception. So there's no way to increase your uh, your health essentially without leveling up. So I might just do two points of strength. Thank you with this image. Yeah, that's a little better. Uh, enter a name. I'll type name here. Uh, there we go. Domnal. Okay. Uh, let's see. You'll want companions to protect you and give you consequence. You can certainly hire mercenaries to join you once you depart the temple, but you can also create some additional avatars now to accompany you for the time being. Which is something I think is unique to this game. I know other games you can create mercenaries, like uh, Pillars of Eternity, you can create mercenaries to follow you, but not at the beginning of the game. In this case, I can create four companions, or I'll just uh, seek out the narrative companions. The narrative companions will be statistically stronger. But with the avatars you create, they will you have full control over their abilities and skills from the get-go. I'm going to stick with the narrative companions for story purposes and for uh, better stats. As you like, my lord, I can offer the services of my nephew, Wilhelm, and our strongest acolyte, Catalina. If you wish to engage Wilhelm, you'll find him wandering about this floor. Catalina is out in the courtyard working on the gardens. Pray send them back to the temple when you can, as they're both important to the temple, and I'm rather fond of Wilhelm especially. I will do what I can. There's a store master in the western wing. He can sell you some supplies to start your journey. I'll give him some emerald I'll give you some emeralds, but I can't take too many from the temple's temple purse without arousing suspicion. I wish I could vouch for every member of this temple, but I think it's safer to trust no one, which means I must Live with the knowledge that I am sending you out in the world with little besides your wits and a few gems. Don't berate yourself, Erline. Your aid has been invaluable. What I can do for you is gather a disguise. If anyone asks for now, say you're a merchant. And then when you're ready to leave, meet me outside the doors in the courtyard. We shouldn't risk being seen together now that you're in mortal form. In a mortal form. Anyone with enough knowledge to know of your of your portal must know that you'd come here first, and spies might be lurking in the shape of temple visitors. Very well, we'll meet then. Alright, and here we are. Uh, I can explore all this stuff, I believe. No items on the ground. Whew, it's kind of fast, alright. Huh. So you approach the book embedded into the wall, you notice dried blood on its spine and a slight metallic odor hits your senses. With a sense of foreboding, you move forward undaunted. When you reach out to touch the book, you feel a sharp pain in your finger and are surprised to see your own blood streaming out of it. A blank page opens in your, and as your blood drips on it, the book absorbs it as if it is ink you. Press the finger to the page. Oh, neat. Um, come on, faster. I think it's smiley face. Okay, it's not working. Oh, that was interesting. Lumen alkalite. We got a torch. Shows a books detailing the history of different lords and great houses of the northern Territorith realms. Without more noble insight, you don't find oh, anything of use. Oh, that's right. I can uh, spend points. Or do I have points? For... So I'm going to put points in nobility. That's what I want to do. I don't remember how to do it. Hoping to figure it out real soon. I see the stats here. Hmm. Well, we'll figure it out later, I guess. 
Greetings, visitor. My duties do not allow time to converse. Excuse me. Very well. I'll loot everything that we can. Because the beginning of this game is very tough. Shelves of simple volumes that are covered in pictures and diagrams that tell a variety of stories. Some are historical legends and other local justices in heroic stories. And are likely entertaining for illiterate settlers. Though without more insight you, into law, you can't make out a pattern in the story. So, right. A dusty book. I don't do anything with that. Here we go. Okay, yeah, so you can select your uh, your aptitudes. Which one you have, I guess, primarily. Let's see if that affects my nobility. I'll go back and check. Oh, and sap spill. That's why I'm moving so slow. If I can equip this. Here we go, now I've got a weapon. Huzzah! I'm armed and dangerous. I'll go ahead and zoom out as well. Okay, AD Stranger. Um, yeah, tell me of your duties. At Lumen Fortin, I do as Lord Erline bids, but I mostly look after the tomes and scrolls. Mayhap I might venture from the hold to gather new text to add to our collection, but only with my lord's leave. Why would a fort need such a vast library? When the original settlers found the ruins of Lumen Fortin. They stocked and established it as an eastern stronghold against the raids of the natives. But in the last decade, the native threat has been quelled, and Lord, Lord Erline has converted the fort into a temple of learning and star lore. What happened to the natives? Most of the natives have not survived the forceful efforts of our Amethivian and Ver Varukov fighters over the past century. But some small pockets remain in the rocky coast of Emerald Metallus. If this is your destination, I bid you to stay near the Song's path. Alright, farewell. I don't talk too much to this guy. Can I talk to this one? Can you tell me of the area? If you wish to leave the temple, the courtyard outside the main doors will lead you to Lumen Targ, the village nearby. Pa says I need not worry about anything but. Paduri and Orf's Bridge, but Lord Erline said I'll be safe if I stay in the fort in your grounds. Or if I bring Catalina with me. She's an acolyte too, but she works in the grounds. Yeah, sage advice, farewell. Normally I'd exhaust all the reading options, but... So I'm reading out loud. Alright, here's Wilhelm. This is one of the guys we were told we could uh, gather. Greetings, Traveler. Can I be of aid to you? Erline said you might be willing to escort me to Emerald Metallus. What aid would your company bring? I'm handy with throwing elixirs and I'm good and am a good woodsman. My mom and pa would often send me out to set traps before I joined the Order at the Temple. So, soul binding is, I think, considered an evil act. It forces them. So, at certain points in the story, the narrative characters can leave you. Like, I'm pretty sure when, once we reach the Emerald, Emerald Metallus, uh, Wilhelm and Catalina will leave. But if I soul bind them, they'll stay with me. And I think I can. I think the option might come up later to do it again. I'll just have them join me for now. All right, and now we have Wilhelm. He's one of those pale guys. So he uses throwing elixirs as a weapon. I might give... I'm gonna give him that. Alright, and I think, let's see here, 
There's explosive trap, and let's see here. Yeah, so that spell that he... Crap, where'd he go? Oh, sorry, Phil Helm's quick spells, right? There we go. Yeah, Blood Cocoon is probably the most useful spell in the game. It's a healing spell, but it's a toggle thing, because there's no mana in the game, so you, you can cast spells all willy-nilly. The only problem is they have a very slow uh, cast time. That's where dexterity comes in, useful, typically. As you approach the book embedded into the wall, you notice dried blood, okay. Yeah, I've already messed up the bloody book, so I don't need to do it again. Now I can go in here, I think I can bash all this stuff open, right? That's the store master. Ooh, rope. Alright, so I only bashed the uh, the bigger purple looking barrels. Let me talk to the store master. I don't think I have any money. I'm in charge of the temple goods. I can sell you some supplies if you're in need. The festival wiped out most of my stock, but I can show you what I have. Let's take a look. Yeah, so let's see. He's got a herb kit, some healing potions, elixir, vials, elixir pack. He doesn't have any weapons. And the store has 250. I don't even know how much I have. Not gonna worry about it. Let's get out of here. Let's go find Catalina. That's a little off putting. What torch? Yeah, where do you hail from? Small town in Corum, and when I was a lad, a traveling scholar roomed at my family's inn and talked of a temple where men and women study the stars and moon. I begged my pa and ma to allow me to join the temple. Can you tell me the area? Master Erlon keeps Lumen Fortin safe from raiders and natives and the beasts of the forest, but leave the protection of his temple and you'll find yourself at the mercy of the wilds. There's an outpost known as Levez where caravanners gather, and a traveler like yourself might find like-minded bodies. All right, let's keep busting open barrels, see what I can get. More torches, biscotti. More rope. And a bone, well, that's a good place for that. There's no doors back here, so we can just keep going this way. Salted meat, emeralds, salted meat, and a torch. I'm not gonna keep talking to these guys. I feel like all these stories are very similar. Also about Ma and Pa and all the other hot stuff. Oh, well, this guy's got a name though. Greetings, stranger. Uh, what are you studying? My lord in Tratus Saltus wishes to discover if the moon's passage would reveal the best times to plant and harvest his bog crops. And they sent me to discuss his theories with Lord Erlon. The lord seems rather preoccupied at the moment. However, perchance, due to much wine at the festival recently. I have more questions. Uh, what can you tell me of the area? It's a relief to leave the heavy marshes of my home, and I must admit that I envy the fertile farmlands of the area. The villagers seem a lucky lot to be under the gentle hand of Lord Erlan, such is not always the case in other districts. Okay, well, not much to talk about here. Fine with that. Ooh. Linguist Words of Power. Incantation book. Not gonna lie, don't know where it went. Oh, here we go. A tattered and slightly torn scroll as if well used by many apprentices over the years. Right click to read.
I was talking about action words. Yeah, these are all curses. Cursing is another... It's just a debuff you can uh, activate in the game. Nothing crazy. Chant to curse a target. Mine. Chant to change your environment. I guess I'm learning these. How do I look at my spells, actually? Let me... There's gotta be a way. Uh, hold on, let me look at my hotkeys real quick. Again, maybe not. I think it'd be under C, right? Hmm. I don't know. Might figure it off camera. Figure it out off camera. Let's go see what this guy's doing. Is it Lumen Cook? I guess I can't talk to him. Okay. Seems fair. Oh no, I'm going outside. I don't want to go outside yet. Okay. Well, shoot. Erlein is standing near the gates with a scroll in his hand. A bag's packed and several worried lines creasing his brow. He hails you. And... Domino steps forward. Might all be a prank, but I cannot shake a feeling that dark times are upon us. It seems unwise to draw attention to yourself, so I've prepared a few items for you. I think it's best to travel as a spicer. They're known to be a curious type of merchant that moves freely and asks many questions. Perfect for you in your search for whoever means you ill. I can do that. A spice merchant visited recently, and left behind her documents granting her rights of trade. I'm afraid we couldn't locate them when she returned looking for them. A pity, but I'll give them to you so Give you them so that you will not be questioned, even in consoles and guild houses. Anywhere you recommend traveling? You might seek out my brother in the Emerald Meta Met Metalis uh, Consul Library. I give you a map. I can at least guarantee he will treat you well and his libraries are extensive if you believe there is any help to be found in the histories of the Staglands. I doubt you'll find much in the northern districts. The lands are so sparsely settled they barely warn a local government. So you prepared to travel yourself? I leave immediately to Corum. Your attacker might have more brewing than a locked portal, and we're better to hide a plot than in that city. If I find anything, I'll try to get you word. Travel safely then. Thank you for your aid. I'll return as I may. Alright, we're going back inside. Alright. I want to finish exploring the temple before I call it an episode today. Hmm. So aqueducts are a rare technology in this world. Probably nothing of note, but let's go talk to RL. Bottles of mead. Study of goblins. Something about a runic code. Okay, so that's a map, study of goblins. So they have low magic resistance. Let's see, scavenge, tools, something, something in groups. 
and some uh, translations for letters. That might come in handy later. Who knows? Let's talk to Aurel. What are you studying? A rather bold question, though. I am amazed and I believe that the patterns of the night sky affect the brilliance of my spells. And I'll leave you alone. This guy looks really cool. Venomous. Spicer, good day to you. How fair are the roads? Yeah, I cannot answer truthfully, as it has been many days since I've tramped them. That makes two of us, as I've spent many days poring over the scrolls in this temple. Are you a scholar? What knowledge eludes you? I seek information on the Bloodless, a race of demigods with immortal life but no godly powers. They play humanity and gods alike. They must be stamped out like rats that they are. Where can these demigods be found? They break into ancient ruins and cower below the earth in catacombs and hidden caverns, breeding hatred for humanity and coming out to kill when boredom threatens to overwhelm, overwhelm them. They cannot die of natural causes, but they can be eliminated by a skilled warrior. How do you know so much already? I came from a long line of bloodless hunters. We are a valued sect amongst the Pisaran. With my companions, we tracked a family of the demons into the stag lands, but they escaped us. I've come to this library for answers, and while here I've heard rumors abounding of the bloodless presence, and I am led to believe there are families lurking below, feeding on these simple people's life force. So they sound like vampires. Uh, if you find a nest of these vipers, seek my companions in Istakeo, in a camp near the forest. My name is Venomous, and they will be grateful for any information on their location. If you choose to face the bloodless alone, do not speak to them. Their words are as much of a weapon as their filthy, taloned hands. Alright, get back to your research, and I'm gonna keep walking around. It's only I ever talked to Cyprian, did I? Or Cyprian? Uh, wait, yes I have. I've talked to you already. I think that's it, right? Yeah. That's it in here. Oh, glad I came back. Let's so see if I get a journal. Oh, I, that's right, I have to put my own notes down. I forgot about that. Which is honestly something I don't mind having uh, a journal that automatically updates, but I think more games should add your own. So let's see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Venomous. Uh, let's see. Seek his companions if we find. Oh. Venomous, uh. Bloodless. Seek Venomous's companions if we find a family of Bloodless. Not sure how to enter it though. There we go. And then what I can do, because I don't remember where he said to seek them at, I'm gonna go back and talk to him and put down the location of where his companions are. He said next to the forest, whatever. It's good to put as many details as I can. Well, another game that does this kind of is a Divinity Original Sin. You can put notes on the map, which I think is a huge deal. It's the kale. All right. Um, companions in is it it's the kale. All right, cool. All right, and we'll go back out here. Uh, if I can seek Catalina real quick, I ah, know I'm just gonna call it an episode here. We're about half an hour, and in the next episode we'll get a. Uh, We'll grab Catalina, and then we'll continue our journey. Find out why our godly portal has been closed. I don't know if I can save willy-nilly in this game. I can, I can. I wonder if there's a quick save option. Let me check that real quick. Uh, hotkeys, let's see. Doesn't seem like it is. All right, well, anyway. 
Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch y'all in the next episode of Serpent in the Staglands.